In this video, we're going to use the advanced three steps to sketch method for tangent graphs so that we can graph y equals tan of x plus pi over two. And so this will really help us get a better feel for how to use the method with an example. Um, and this is a somewhat simple example. Um, do note that if you know the parent graph y equals tangent of x, you simply could take that graph and shift it to the left pi over two units. Um, and that would be a very efficient way to get this particular equation graphed. Um, but today we really wanna dig into the method. Um, so we're going to use the template and make sure we fully understand how to use this method so we can do it with um, any tangent equation that we might see. All right, so here is the template and we've got our grid. And we do know that this equation is in the form y equals a tangent of bx minus c plus d. And like we said before, there's not a ton going on in this equation, um, but we will still use the method to break everything down. So jumping in, step one is to find the essentials. And we'll start by taking a look at the base graph and then getting our axes labeled. So from our general form equation, we see that a is the coefficient in front of tangent. And since we don't see a particular number there, we know a will be one. Okay, it's an understood one there. And this will help us with our curve setting points or our curve shaping points. Um, and those points will be the same as the original graph of tangent since a is one. Okay, we can see that b is the coefficient of x. It is also one. And so this tells us two things. First of all, one cycle will happen between zero and pi uh, for our graph. And it also helps us calculate the period. And to do that for tangent, you simply calculate pi divided by b. So pi divided by one, our period here is pi. That's the length of one horizontal cycle. Okay, so now we can set some scale labels and this will be how we count to label our tick marks on our axes. And the horizontal labels are particularly important to help us get a nice clean and equally distributed graph. So to do that, all we have to do is take our period and divide by four. So we have our period pi, we divide by four, we should label our horizontal tick marks by pi over four. All right, and then for our vertical axis, it usually works well to count by ones. So let's go ahead and label our axes while we're here. So horizontally, we'll count by pi over four. So that's one pi over four, two pi over four, which reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four, which of course reduces to five, uh, to pi, and then we have five pi over four. And on the negative part of the horizontal axis, we'll repeat this. It'll be the same values, just with negative signs. So negative three pi over four, negative pi, and negative five pi over four. All right, so we have the horizontal axis labeled, and now we can go ahead and label the vertical axis, simply counting by ones. All right. So now that we've got that set up, we are ready to get into identifying our shifts. And so if you've watched the basic method for graphing tangent graphs, uh, everything that we've done up to this point would have been the exact same as that method. And the advanced method really just helps us tackle those shifts. And you see, we'll take care of that in step three, but right now we just want to make sure we analyze from the equation. So we have two shifts, our horizontal or phase shift and our vertical shift. Okay, so to find our phase shift, we just calculate C over B. Just be careful of that BX minus C. So we have a plus here. We should really know that's like X minus negative pi over two. So C is actually negative pi over two, or we'll be moving left with this phase shift. So you can note that as negative pi over two, or if it helps you to write left, you can do that as well. All right, and then we see that D or the ending term, we have an understood plus zero there. So we do not have any vertical shifting going on for this particular graph. Okay, so we've broken down everything we need from the equation. I like to go ahead and find the asymptotes equation um, so that I feel confident 
in how my graph looks at the end. It's a great way to double check yourself. So to do that, all you need to do is take the horizontal transformations. Let's clean that up for just a second. So the horizontal transformations are the inputs in the, of the tangent function. And all you have to do to find the asymptotes equation is set those, so x plus pi over 2, equal to the parent function asymptotes. So those are the asymptotes of tangent x, which are pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is an integer. All right, so we have this set up, and now we just need to solve for x. So we'll do that by subtracting pi over 2 from both sides. So on the left, we're left with x, and we subtract like terms. So we have pi over 2 minus pi over 2, so of course that's 0. And then the pi k is its own type term, so it stays as plus pi k. Now you even could write this as just x equals pi k. That works just as well. Um, do whichever is most comfortable to you. So I'll just keep it as 0 plus pi k, just so we remember how we got that. So this equation for asymptotes will generate any of the asymptotes for your graph. Simply substitute in values for k that are integers. So you can let k be 0. We should have an asymptote at x equals 0. If k is 1, substitute that in, and you can see you'd have 0 plus pi, so there should be another asymptote at pi. If you let k be negative 1, you should see there should be one at negative pi. Um, and so this equation will get you all of your asymptotes for this equation, even though there are infinitely many. It's a really efficient way to represent them. All right, so we've organized all our information. We've analyzed everything that we need to. We're ready for step two, which is to lightly plot the base pattern. And so that's using the information up here. We know our base pattern for tangent when it's not reflected is zero, point, asymptote, point. Okay, so let's lightly plot this, or I'll use a light blue because these are temporary points. We will shift them in just a moment. So we have our zero that starts at the origin we have our curve set shaping point, which will happen at the first horizontal tick mark, and the y-coordinate will be a, so a is 1. Okay, we would have an asymptote, again, lightly. And then we have our next and final curve shaping point, which will happen at the third tick mark, and its y-coordinate will be negative a. Okay, so go ahead and close this temporary graph out with the start of another cycle. So that'd be a, another point at pi, an x-intercept at pi. And that's all we need to do for step two. We have the base pattern. And now we're ready to go into step three, where we'll shift, sketch, and repeat. So we're ready to shift. We're going to be moving those light blue points, or the points that you marked lightly, and we'll use a different color. I'll use green for the final graph so that it's very clear. Um, and you can always go back and erase your light marks once we're finished. So we said that our shift, we only, we're looking here, we only had one shift. It was the phase shift or the horizontal movement. And we should be moving each of these light blue points to the left pi over two units. So that'll be two horizontal grid marks. So starting at the origin, move that point left pi over two. All right, that's our first final point. Our curve shaping point at pi over four, comma one. We'll move that one left pi over two, or two tick marks. Okay. Our vertical asymptote, of course, when you move a vertical line left, it moves, so left two. And we'll have an asymptote here. And x equals zero, that should be sounding familiar. We should feel really confident. We already looked at that with our asymptotes equation. Um, so it's great that we have one right there. And then we will move our point at 3 pi over 4, negative 1, to the left pi over 2 units. And we can even move that point at pi 0, just so we have it there. And of course, if you'd had vertical shifting, you could have done that at the same time as you did the phase shift. So let's go ahead and sketch this tangent curve in. Okay, 
So that's one cycle of our graph. And at this point, now you can repeat this pattern that we have in green. So I'll show the repeats in purple. And you're simply moving this graph or copying this pattern. So we have zero curve shaping point, asymptote. All right, there's an asymptote at pi like we talked about earlier and negative curve setting point. So you can sketch in this part of a tangent curve. And of course, we'll kind of just show that continues on off the grid past where we have. And we can work in the negative direction as well. So you're just copying this pattern down. Here's a vertical asymptote at negative pi, which we talked about. And we don't have any more to go, so we'll just show it continues on this way. So here we have close to three cycles of y equals tangent x plus pi over two, a phase shifted tangent graph. And one thing to notice, if you look between going back to B, we said B tells us how many cycles should happen between zero and pi. And so if you look, we have one full cycle of tangent that happens between zero and pi between those two asymptotes. And so that should make us feel really confident too that we have an accurate sketch. All right, so that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching and check out the links in the video description if you want to see more examples of how to graph tangent equations. Um, and you can also find links to some of the other trig functions as well.